concern, but it's kind of weird. All right, friends, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I have flies all over my truck. You guys see those? What's going on with that? It is February, not February, my goodness. It's March the 5th, and I've never seen flies like that all over my truck before. Let me know in the comments what's going on here. I'm not concerned, but it's kind of weird. All right, friends, welcome back to the sawmill. We have a lot going on today because would, do you guys mind? I'm trying to talk to YouTube here. Y'all mind? Man, those chickens are loud today. They're wanting out. I'll let you guys out here in about 45 minutes. Just hang loose, 45 minutes. So anyways, where were we? I lost my train of thought. That's a shocker. I'm starting all over again. Welcome back to the sawmill. Hope you guys are doing good out there today. We got a lot going on because we got a big storm coming in tomorrow. So I need to get a lot of pine sawed and put on stickers before that rain gets here. And I just sold some walnut slabs. You guys saw that footage at the first of this video. And I'll talk about that here in just a few minutes as far as how I do when I sell my slabs that are green. Those were not kiln dried. Those were green as a gourd, guys. Just saw those about a week ago here on this channel. But before we head up to the sawmill, we're gonna get in the truck and go up to the feed store because those loud birds up there are getting low on chicken feed. You guys hang in there. Before I head out, I've got to grab George. He loves a car ride. Hello, Mr. George. You ready to go, buddy? I think he's ready. See if we can jump up in the truck today and not fall out. He's been doing a lot better with this. Come on, bud. Everybody's watching. You, oh, look you there. That's a good job, buddy. You ready? He's ready.
friends, we got a nasty pine log on the sawmill. This is white pine. It's a nine footer. And it's pretty rough looking on the outside. This is one of these logs that we cleaned up down the log yard about a month ago with the excavator. I got this from a tree service. I got it for free. Go ahead and tell you that. I would never buy a log like this. And I think it's been on the ground for close to a year. When he brought these logs over here, the bark was already off of most of them. So it's been on the ground for a while. I did do a fresh cut right here on the operator's side to make sure it was still solid. And it looks okay, so we don't have any rot going on that I could see. But we may see some rot right here on the sapwood when we take off this opening face. There's a lot of worm holes right here. And we may see some blue stained pine on this as well. That pine beetle will cause blue staining on your pine every time, just about, it seems like for me. A lot of people like that. I don't really care for it too much myself, but it does make your lumber more valuable if it does have the blue stain on it. Let me check this length one more time. Okay, 113 inches, so nine foot six. This is not a great saw log. We're gonna get something out of it, but it's pretty rough. It's kind of an oval shape right there. The diameter going this way is 12 and a half, and up and down, it's about 15. Now I did my best to center the pith on both ends but it may be off just a little, and we'll see that in the lumber once we start sawing into it. But as long as I can get this trapped right here inside of a two by six and contain that pith in one single board, I'm in good shape. Other than these knot clusters here that are about two feet apart, we should get some decent two by sixes out of this. You couldn't do two by fours on a log like this, and here's why. There's knot clusters every two feet and these knots are separated by just a few inches right there, guys. They're really close together. So if you try to do two by fours on something like this, you're gonna have large knots down the length of the board, which pretty much means a hole in your lumber and it makes a weak point right there and it will break. So if you have a lot of these low grade knotty pine logs, and let's say somebody wants two by fours, cut them two by sixes and they'll be a lot happier because you just can't get nice two by fours out of these naughty logs like this. There's no way. Two by sixes, you can do it. Or two by tens or whatever you want. Two by fours ain't gonna happen. You can do it, but they're not gonna come back for more two by fours in the future because those two by fours are gonna break every time right there at that knot. I've seen it happen way too many times. And while I'm thinking about it, the lubrication tank is kinda low I'm still running a dishwasher, not dishwasher, my goodness, windshield washer fluid. Even though it's getting towards spring, it's not really cold right now like it was back in the winter, even though it is still winter. But I like running that stuff, guys. I tell you what, there's something about the uh, windshield washer fluid that I like when I add a little bit of the cotton gin oil to it, or the cotton lubricant. I don't have that up here right now. I may be out of that stuff, my goodness. I need to do better on keeping stuff stocked up here. But I like running that with the Cotton Gear lubricant. It works really good. And if you want to try that Cotton Gin lubricant out, see if your feed store has it or go online. I get mine from a place down in Arkansas, some feed store. It's really cheap. What it gets you though is the shipping because it's, you know, gallon juds. Kind of heavy when you start adding up lots of uh, juds of that stuff. I buy a case at a time. The shipping costs four times more than the actual product does. So we're sawing this into two by sixes and here's what we want. After these are kiln dried, I'm gonna run them through the molder and produce an actual size two by six. So I need to oversaw this. We're doing nine quarter on the thickness and on the width. In the past, I've been trying seven inches. I think I'm gonna do six and three quarter on this one or maybe even six and a half. One more check here, friends, and we'll get going. Need to check the blade tension. I think I got it at my right setting. See how we're looking there. Yeah, we're good to go. On the sawmill, Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want to try out those blades, call Joe Main. His cell phone number is in the video description. One more thing here, guys, and we'll get going. You may see me grab this squirt bottle and spray the blade while I'm sawing today. If I start seeing a lot of pitch build up on the blade, I like to use diesel to keep that clean. I don't run diesel in the water tank anymore because I don't think it's necessary. If you're sawing a lot of pine 
it may be necessary if you're doing this all day long. The cotton gin stuff works pretty good, but nothing works better in my opinion than diesel to keep your blade clean. I like using it, but I don't use a lot of it. It don't take much.
All right, guys, real fast, the log we just finished up, I got three two by sixes out of it, and I got a few one inch boards as well. And that's what I'm talking about when I talked about getting the pith in the center. That's not perfect. I would rather the pith be about a quarter of an inch below where it's at, but that right there is better than nothing. I'll take that all day, as long as it's in the middle of your board right there. That's very important. And these two by sixes right here are free of heart or free of the pith rather. And they look really good, but this one right here on the top does have a little bit of rod in it. Whenever you see some red color in your pine, that's not Bot's Elder, friends. That's rot right there. That's unfortunate, but that may plane off after we run these through the kiln. We'll have to wait and see on that. All right, friends, it looks like we're out of time. I forgot. Actually, I didn't forget about this, but it kind of slipped my mind, but I'm headed out of town for the next two days with Bruno, and I haven't packed or anything, and I gotta get the chickens ready and the dogs, one of the dogs down to the kennel, uh, Mr. George is going with us, get the cats ready, let the neighbors know what's going on. There's a lot to take care of here, so uh, I kind of dropped the ball on that. But that's the way it goes sometimes. So we will pick back up here in about two days on this pine. And this one here, friends, is a disaster. I'm not sure why I didn't throw this one on the burn pile. It's got a crotch right here on the side. I should took my chainsaw and got rid of that. I don't know why I left that on there. And it's got a little bit of a sweet to it. Terrible saw log, especially for what I'm using it for, but I'll saw it up anyways. We'll see how it looks, I guess. It might not be too bad once we get these faces peeled back, but this giant knot right here, that could be a problem. That's about a 10 inch knot on the side. Not good, guys, not good. So anyways, let me cover a few things here that I talked about earlier. So in the first of this video, which was this morning, you guys saw me sell those walnut slabs. Now those slabs were not dried, they were green. They're actually the slabs that you guys saw on this channel about uh, two weeks ago. Those ones that were 29 inches wide, I had seven of them total. That's the video that I hit the insulator on. Now here's why I sold those green. I sell those and a lot of other green slabs to another sawmill about an hour from here and I wholesale them as one solid log. And he has a kiln at his location and a bigger customer base than I have. So what he will do with that location, he'll air dry them, kiln dry them, and then most of them are sold as soon as they come out of the kiln. And it works out for me and him both. I got a good connection here for black walnut logs. His connection for walnut logs is not so good up there. It's kind of sporadic. So he can come down here and buy them from me green at a cheaper price than kiln dried slabs will cost. And he can take them back and do the hard work, which is, which is the drying. That's the hardest work when it comes to slabs, in my opinion. And he can sell them at his location. And then I can get some fast money from that log, sell them green, and get them out of my hair, and I'll have to fool with them. I could make a lot more money with them if I sold them kiln dried. But for me right now, when it comes to these big walnut slabs, if I can get rid of them all at once and get a good price for them if they're green, I'm going to do that because it really makes sense for my business model here since these videos have here lately in the past year or two turned into a big part of our business. I don't have a lot of time anymore to sell lumber to people, individuals, put it that way. If I kill and dried those seven slabs and sold them to seven different people, that would take several months maybe, maybe even a year, depends on how the market is. I don't live in a really dense populated area. We don't have a lot of uh, high-end woodworkers here. So it would take me a longer time to get rid of them. And then I have to deal with all those different customers coming here. You know, I'll be there at three o'clock. That means they'll be here at 3.30. They want to see the sawmill. They want a tour. I just don't have time for that anymore. And if I can get rid of them and get some good money for them green, which is not bad money. It's not bad, guys. I'll tell you, it's, it, it's a pretty good profit once you factor in how much you pay for the log. So there's a lot of guys that do that, though. There's several sawmills in this county, two that I could think of right offhand that does a lot of green slabs and green lumber. They'll sell stuff straight off the mill. So there's a lot of people doing that. And it's a good way to make money and it keeps the lumber going, you know. So I can't keep it forever. I used to keep these slabs. I would saw them, I would stack them up for air drying and sometimes I'd have them for four or five years. And that's just crazy. And they'd get rid of them, move them on to somebody who's gonna make something nice out of them because I don't have time anymore 
even to hardly build furniture and stuff like that because these videos keep us so busy here and this farm and the property and the new property and all the improvements we're trying to do so it is what it is so that's what happens sometimes and you guys don't see this sometimes i resell logs to other sawmills I've got good connection for logs around here, and I may get a, uh, here's a good example. I may get a phone call about butternut. Now, that's kind of hard to find around here. But when my loggers do find it, they usually call me first. I very rarely turn them down on it. So if I get some butternut logs, and I get, let's say, let's say I got to buy 10 of these instead of just buying two. Maybe he's got half a truck load or 15. So if I buy those, I'm not going to need 15 of those. I may take 10 of them and sell them to a different mill because he can't find them. You know, increase the price a little so you can make a little money. But I do that a lot, guys. I resell logs here a lot of the times. So that's just part of the business and that's the way it goes. So in closing here, I hope what I said made sense to you guys. And if you're running sawmills out there, there are people that are looking for green slabs. So if you've got a lot of nice live edge slabs, you don't want to fool with them, or you've got a lot in inventory and can't move them, Find you some wholesale guys, and you can get rid of several truckloads at a time. It's really nice. It's really fast. I mean, it's, it's a really good feeling whenever you look down the road, and there goes that trailer with about eight or nine slabs on it. And sometimes I'll send out 30 slabs at a time. The most I've ever sold at one time is 35, I think. And man, that's a good feeling right there, because you know you've made room for more inventory, and you can get back to saw milling and keep the whole cycle going. So in closing here, friends, I really appreciate everybody watching. And there's a lot coming on the channel this year, guys. As soon as this weather improves a little, I have multiple excavator projects. I am ready to start digging out the bank for the new equipment barn. We're gonna be building that with sawmill lumber. All kinds of stuff going on here, guys. We have a very busy year playing here at the mill. So uh, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here in a few days. Mm -hmm.